And of the county, the health department says that individual has not resided there for several weeks. The FBI is trying to spread awareness of COVID-19 scams to people in the Upper Peninsula. Hundreds of complaints have already been reported to the FBI of criminals trying to steal personal and financial information. Although scams are not new, criminals are utilizing this time to prey on the fear and anxiety of people. Now, this video is not the correct video, but whether the scams are through emails, phone calls, or social media, the FBI wants people to be cautious of these COVID-19 scams. pandemic, Dickinson County health care system has been letting the community and its leaders know how they are handling. You know, trying to get people to click on links uh, to the CDC that that they, you know, send them an email saying, hey, there's a map of uh, COVID-19 coronavirus. Uh, click on this, which is all phishing. Could be a phishing scam. Um, to the fact that people are trying to, you know, send people emails about the economic stimulus. Uh, because people are fearful of getting their check. People want that check. You know, the U.S. government is not sending out emails asking people for their information, their financial information, or, or phoning them either through this economic stimulus. The criminals are trying to do that. The FBI says if you don't recognize a link or website sent to you, don't click on it. Don't provide personal and financial information to those who claim to be with the CDC or government. If you do give out your financial information and think you may have been scammed, call your bank or credit card company. Also, report any potential scams to www.ic3.gov. As hospitals across the Upper Peninsula prepare for the pandemic to take full force up here, Dickinson County Healthcare System provided an update on their efforts. Local 3's Rebecca Bartome has more. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, Dickinson County Health Care System has been letting the community and its leaders know how they are handling the situation. The hospital has a COVID-19 steering committee that meets every morning to discuss what has happened and action steps for the future. We started out by making sure that we provided really good system-wide education to all of our employees and that we started educating the community. We created a hotline so that the community can call in with questions and we also created an alternate testing site. As of Tuesday morning, DCHS has done 41 tests. 19 have come back negative and one came back positive for a resident in Marinette, Wisconsin. They also have a respiratory clinic to screen patients. Also keep them either at home safely at home or have them be seen in the respiratory clinic so that limits and mitigates the exposure. Right now, Hadley says they are working on executing their inpatient preparedness plan. So we are creating a respiratory symptom wing versus a non-respiratory symptom wing. We've also done that in our emergency department and our OB department and our OR department. So we've separated those patients that are at risk and have put special precautionary measures in place to take really good care of the patients, but also protect the staff, keeping those patients without any symptoms separate from the patients that show signs. Hadley says they don't know how intense the pandemic will be in the UP, but are preparing for whatever may come their way. Given what we've seen in lower Michigan and other areas in New York, we could very well be um, in for an, an intense group of patients. But fortunately for the Upper Peninsula, we have really great social distancing. I think the communities have responded great. The community leaders have brought out the information. So I think for the UP, we may be fortunate that our population isn't so condensed as the other areas, but we are preparing that we've only seen the tip of the iceberg and that we could maybe get some additional patients. Reporting for Local 3 News, I'm Rebecca Bartlemay.